All right, so I wanted to do a tutorial for your class problem on constructing a titration curve. So let's put the question up here. We need to construct a curve for the titration of 25 mils of a 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide solution with 0.0625 molar HCl. All right, so some notes that we will place up in Excel from our chapter nine include the calculation at the equivalency point. And this is determined as MABA equals MBBB. So this equation is the same that you were using for the weak acids to find the amount of the titrant that you're going to need to add to the titrand. So in this case, the titrand is the sodium hydroxide. So your solution is going to start off very basic, right? And then um, you're titrating it with the HCl. So it will be getting less basic over time until you reach the equivalency point, at which time if you still add more acid, it's going to get more acidic. So that's what you should be preparing for when you're thinking about what your graph should look like. All right, so if we do this equation, um, I can set up cells with our initial molarities, right? So we have our concentration of the sodium hydroxide, right, is 0 0.125, right? And we have the stock, so that's the stock. Um, we know the volume is 25 mils. Okay, that's going to remain constant because that's what we have in our flask. And we know the concentration of our stock of HCl. Okay, so we can do this calculation then uh, at the equivalency point. So we are going to need to solve for the volume of acid that we're going to need to neutralize our base. Right, so we're going to solve for VA. So if we solve for that, it would be MBVB over MA. So we can put those values into Excel. All right, and that gives us a value of 50 milliliters of HCl at the equivalency point, right? So um, we know that the strong acid and strong base, when they react together, so we know our formula for that is sodium hydroxide plus the HCl goes to completion, and it forms NaCl and water which both of these cannot act as a weak base or a weak acid. So we know the pH at the equivalency point has to be seven, right, for strong acid and strong base. Okay, so that is our first point for our graph, right? And um, we are going to start some columns because we're gonna wanna have a lot of different volumes, right? And on our x-axis, let's start with that. And the second column, we're gonna put the y-axis. So in our titration curve, the x-axis is the milliliters of the HCl, so volume. And in the y-axis, we're going to have the pH. All right, and that's going to be what we need to graph. So we need to figure out how to calculate this. And the first thing, we need to decide, you know, how, what our breakpoint is in adding our milliliters. So if you were physically doing this in the lab, you could add a few milliliters and then check the pH, you know, every few milliliters. And then you could just do this uh, in the lab as an experiment. All right, but we can also do that by calculating. So I'm just going to say we're going to add in five milliliter increments, right? And we know that our set point or the equivalency point is at 50 milliliters. So I'm just going to put those in to start. All right, so in selecting values here, I want to select a range that's fully around our equivalency point, right? And I know the pH at the equivalency is 7.00. We'll do that. Um, I like to show the significant figures. All right, so if you want to show your significant figures, this has to be set to number. And then you can choose to push it out. So it's now showing me everything that I put in there. But you can use these little uh, numbers to bump them in or out. We are going to say 7.00. OK, so there's a starting place. So from chapter 9, 
and the information that you learn. Um, when we're starting with excess base, we have an equation to calculate the OH minus. So let's go ahead and pop that in there, see what that looks like. All right, and this is just from chapter nine, so you could look this up. Um, so this is before the equivalency point. Okay, so this is before the equivalency point. We're going to have more sodium hydroxide in there than HCl, because that's what we're doing our titration with. So the uh, solution is going to be basic. So we can calculate that concentration of the hydroxide ions by taking the moles of sodium hydroxide added minus the moles of HCl um, initial. And this is over the total volume. So we can substitute in our concentrations and volumes up here. So we can have MBVB minus MAVA, and then all of that's over the total volume. We have fixed cells for those first three units, right? We've got MB, we've got VB, and we've got MA up there. Now we have the volume of the acid that is down here. That's going to be VA. And now we need a total volume category as well. So we'll put that here, and maybe I'll split the header. So I'll say solution. Okay, so I'm going to say solution, total volume. And as long as you keep your volumes in the same units, that's going to be totally fine. So I'm going to keep all of mine in milliliters. We're getting a concentration out here, and so our concentrations will still remain in molarity, and our milliliters will end up canceling out in the equation. So we don't have to convert everything into liters. All right, so our total volume, right, is going to be our initial volume of the sodium hydroxide plus however much we add of the acid. So I can do an equation for this one. So I'm going to say equals, and I am going to lock this one, right? So I want to lock B4 into position there. That is my volume of the sodium hydroxide in my flask, and then I want to add the volume of the acid right there, right? So I'm going to hit equals, and that's nice. 25 plus 5 is 30. Equation looks right. You can just grab it and drag it down, and then you've got the total volumes of your solutions. That's going to be the base down here, right? Okay, so now I can calculate the concentration of the OH, but again, this is just before the equivalency point. Right, so I'm going to calculate right, in a new column. So this is our concentration of the OH minus with molarity uh, in this column here. Okay, so uh, to do that, it is going to equal this equation here, this equation out here. So again, I've got fixed values. Uh, for a lot of this, and then um, the total solution volume there. So first we're going to do equals. So you want to make sure that the numerator stays together and you do all the functions up there before you do the division. So make sure that you have parentheses up here. So we know the molarity of our solution. We can put that in, and I want to lock that into place. That's not going to change. So that is over here in A4, okay? So I've locked that in. I know the volume of this as well, and we're going to lock that in. That's not going to change either. That is in B4, all right? And we're going to subtract MAVA, all right? So MA is also going to remain constant for us, and that is in C4. And times the volume. So there's our volume of the HCl. Now I'm going to close parentheses, and we can do the division component down there. That is just the total volume. We've made a column for that already. So I can select that, C8, and we should be able to hit Enter. All right. So this is the concentration of the hydroxide ions in solution that are left at these titration points. This is only good, again, before the equivalency point. So I'm going to take this, and I am going to drag it down to my equivalency point. All right. At the equivalency point, it's going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 7. 
we don't really need to put that in there because we don't need to calculate that pH. We have that pH. All right, so on the other side, right down here, now we're going to need to think about flipping this equation because after the equivalency point, we are going to have more acid than we have base. So here's that equation for um, after the equivalency point. You can see it's essentially the same as this one above here, but it just flip-flops the HCl to that front position because now we have more HCl than NaOH. And so we're calculating the concentration of HCl, which is equivalent to the H3O+. Plus, right? This is essentially the same thing because HCl is a strong acid and will fully dissociate. All right, so we're calculating H3O plus directly in this set, in this next set. Okay, so we can use this equation for those calculations. I'm going to make another lane here for calculating H3O plus. Once we've calculated H3O plus, we can then calculate our pH. So this guy is the critical column, right? We need to know the molarity of this solution. All right, so that's in molar concentrations. We'll come back to this first part here in a minute, but let's go ahead and do after the equivalency point. Right, So we want to start in this cell down here, calculating after we reach equivalency. Now it's going to be MAVA. Right, So MA is constant. Right, That's our value up here. I'm going to put a parenthesis around there. Okay. And we need the volume for the acid. That's changing. I'm going to come over there and grab that. All right, minus MBVB. Okay, that's in A and B. We can close parentheses there. And then we want to put this whole thing over the total volume, which is that cell there. And we hit equals. And that gives us our concentration of H3O plus at that position. And we're going to drag that down for the rest of the titration. You can see as you add more of the acid, the concentration of H3O plus goes up. That looks good. All right. So now we need to calculate the H3O plus in here from our concentration here. Right. So we need to use Kw for that. All right. So we know our Kw equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Put that into Excel, looks like that. All right, and we know that that is the product of the protons and the hydroxide ions. So we can now calculate uh, the concentration of the protons in here based on this number divided by that number. Right, so I'm just going to lock this one in there. Okay, so I put in our G4, and then I want to divide it by this one. All right, so a very low concentration of protons makes sense. pH is going to be very high. All right, and we can drag down here. Okay, so now we have our concentrations of the H3O plus, or the acid in the solution. We can use that to calculate the pH um, in here. And if you wanted to put 1 to the negative 7, you can put that there as your equivalency point and use it in your calculation. You can just drag that whole thing down then. So we know that our pH equals the minus log of the concentration of the protons. There we go. So here we started out. I'm just going to drag this whole thing down. All right. And now we've got our pH set up. So now we're ready to graph, right? So I can grab these two lanes. I'm going to grab all of those. Go up to Insert Graph. Let's do our XY scatter. I'm going to include the one that has the um, line, just so it kind of puts our, our graph in order there. Right, And there is our titration curve. It's not perfect in Excel because it, it's kind of blocky. Um, we could get maybe a little bit better curve in here if we did a few more points near the um, equivalency point. We might get tighter straight line dropping down. But this is sufficient. All right, let's add some chart elements. All right, and there is your titration curve.
Hopefully this will help you out.